All right. Hey, everybody. Happy Monday yet again. Um, sorry for the delay. I had a little technical issue. Um, today, I'm going to be talking some more about cleaning your dog's paws without touching them uh, and focusing today on getting them to step into a foot bath or something with water in it so you can get like mud or other things off your dog's paws. Last week, we talked a little bit about um, getting your dog to just move around on a mat or a towel to get um, kind of surface dirt off of their paw pads or dust or something. Um, today's videos um, address the situation where your dog has more, more dirt or mud on their feet and you really need to get them into some water to wash that off before they come into the house. Um, and some of the exercises I'll show you today are pretty simple. And if you don't, if your dog isn't fearful, um, and or they have no problem having their paws handled or they're totally comfortable in water, then a lot of the things I'll show you today are gonna be pretty simple for them. The, um, the approach I'm taking today is meant to be most helpful for those of you whose dogs, um, whose dogs are scared of novel things often, like even a plastic tub, if you put it out, they might be wary of it. Uh, dogs who don't like water particularly and really don't like having their paws touched. All right, so let's dig in. No touch paw washing for dogs who don't like their, their toesies handled, their paws touched. Um, many dogs don't like their paws touched, even dogs who aren't otherwise fearful. But we're taking into account um, gen dogs who do have some general fearfulness as well in today's, um, today's topic. All right, so I'll talk real quick about the setups that I have tried for this self-paw washing and the pros and cons and things you might want to think about if you're going to set this up. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about some training considerations and steps to try to get your dog to start stepping into a tub or a pool without water in it, just a dry tub. Then we'll talk about adding water and how to get your dog stepping into the water, moving around in the water to um, get mud off paws. All right, paw wash setup. So I don't know how many of your dogs look like this dog in the photo when they get in from a walk or hike, but my dogs frequently look that way. Mud, um, mud covered feet sometimes uh, past the wrists, even up to the elbows. Uh, the first thing you're gonna need is some kind of water receptacle, um, a plastic tub or a kiddie pool or some kind of tray as long as it holds water that you can set up uh, near a hose or some other water source outside the house. Uh, how big of a tub or pool do you need? Um, hmm, kind of depends. I mean, your dog should be able to at least get one or two paws into the thing comfortably, uh, but it doesn't have to really be bigger than that. Although I'll show you in the videos, if you do have something larger like a kiddie pool, it gives you more options for getting your dog to move their paws around in the water, which then gives you kind of more, more washing action. <laughs> Uh, how high should the tub be? Well, it depends how much water you want. Um, you know, if you just need wa enough water to cover your dog's toes, then you could get away with a pretty low-sided tub or a tray. If your dog tends to get dirt, like, all the way up to their armpits, then you're probably going to want a deeper tub. Um, but something to keep in mind is that the taller the edges, the taller the sides of the tub or the pool, the more effort it's going to take for a dog to get into it. For a small dog, at some point, that's probably going to be a little too hard for them. And um, my own senior dogs let me know that um, if a dog has arthritis, even a larger dog might not be that comfortable stepping over the high sides of a tub to get into it. So just things to keep in mind depending on your dog's particular situation. Uh, the surface of the tub can matter quite a bit. Um, I have a black plastic tub I used, you'll see in the videos, and it's quite smooth on the bottom. And my dog Jasper in particular was much less, actually Pancake too, was much less um, happy about getting into it when I didn't have a mat on the bottom. And when I added a little piece of yoga mat, they were much happier. So it was, um, didn't let them slip around at all. So having either a textured uh, floor on the tub or the pool or having some kind of non-slip mat will help you. And then um, the last piece of the setup is to have something to dry your dog's feet or to let them dry their feet as they come out of the tub or the pool. 
Um, and I'll show you an example of that as well that I've used, just having some door, like soft terry cloth mats, bath mats, towels around the thing. So when your dog exits the water, they're walking on something that'll dry some of that water off their feet. Uh, the reason I'm going to so much detail here, you know, if you don't have a fearful dog and your dog isn't bothered by much, this might seem like overkill. But if you do work with dogs who are sensitive, you know that a lot of little things can um, can sort of turn it, your fearful dog off of a training uh, session, right? And so if you spend, and you don't know for sure, when you go in, you're going to be just have it, making your best guesses as to what will be easiest for your dog. Um, but the better sort of situation you have for your dog at, when you start out, the less um, sort of do-overs you'll spend time doing when you figure out, okay, well, that didn't work. This doesn't work. My dog's afraid of this. So um, so that's why I'm spending so much time going into these details. Oh, someone wrote that they like their Ikea boot tray for quick paw rinses. Not very deep, but good for quick rinses. Oh, that's a great idea. Boot tray. Yeah, a boot tray is a really nice option for a shallow, shallow foot bath. All right, so here are a few options I tried out with our dogs. Um, in the upper left, that's like just like a Rubbermaid bin for, I don't know, dishes probably. <laughs> yeah, you can tell we don't use it for dishes. Um, so pretty deep, but also pretty small. Um, the one in the upper, sorry, that was upper left. The one in the upper right is more of kind of a busing um, bin, like for dishes at a restaurant or something. It's a little, it's not quite as deep as that Rubbermaid bin, but it has quite a bit more uh, surface area, like floor area. I really like that one. And then for maximum uh, sort of floor area and space to move around, we have also been using the kiddie pool. Obviously, that also takes up the most space. So it depends on what your setup is at home. Because we have a big back porch and it's summer, we have the kiddie pool out for the dogs. So this has been easy to use as well. And then a few other setup notes. Um, Upper left, that's that plastic busing bin with, uh, I cut a square of an old yoga mat and that's what's in the bottom of that. That worked pretty well um, to reduce slipping on the plastic surface of this of this uh, tub when there was water in it. The downside was that at least this particular yoga mat, when there was more than an inch or two of water in here, the thing would float. So my dogs didn't love that. Um, in the kiddie pool photo in the upper right, that is a plas or a rubber rather rubber bath mat that has suction cups on the bottom. So um, that stays put a little bit better. And then the middle bottom photo is just showing the um, the kiddie pool, and then I've got like a soft absorbent um, door mat there, the red one, and then two dog towels. I'm sort of making a, a crescent around the the kiddie pool. And we ha I had three dogs this day all washing their paws. So I wanted to cover maximum area <laughs> to make sure all the dogs dry their paws off. Okay, so stepping into the tub, first thing we're going to train. Um, and I would personally, unless your dog loves water, I, I'd recommend starting this training without any water in the tub. So you're really just training your dog to like target the tub with their foot. Um, and you don't have to start with whatever tub that you want to ultimately use for, um, for a foot bath, especially if you've got a dog who tends to be a little um, hesitant to approach new objects. Something bigger, like that big black plastic tub I showed you, or a kiddie pool, some fearful dogs are not going to... Um, be eager to approach that new object right away. And so starting with something smaller or with lower sides might be a little less intimidating to them. And then you can work your way up to the tub that you want to use ultimately. Um, I'll show you video of this, but at first you're just going to want to get any interaction with the object, your dog approaching the thing, sniffing it, whatever. And you have a few different ways of increasing the chances of getting that behavior or those behaviors so that you can reinforce them. One is just food lures. So, you know, you could toss treats into the tub or near it, um, prompts or cues, 
Like I could tap and you'll see some examples in the video. You could tap the side of the tub to encourage your dog to check it out. Um, you could capture any interaction with the object. And that basically just means you put out the object and wait for your dog to do something that you can reinforce. Those are all options to get started. Um, and then once you've got your dog approaching the tub or your starter object, if you're using something other than the, the real tub to start, um, especially for our sensitive, fearful dogs, we're going to start by reinforcing the smallest sort of thing, the thing that they can start out doing, which is probably not going to be putting their paws in the tub, right? Um, if the dog approaches and kind of sniffs the edge of the tub, that's a great place to start. Reinforce that. We will work up toward front paws in and usually rear paws going into the tub are the, the last thing. But don't expect to get paws in the tub right away. Oops. Okay. Let me go back. All right, so um, I'm going to show you some video of Pancake learning to um, step on an object, so kind of paw target an object. Uh, so this is what I used as a starter object for Pancake for stepping in. I just used an old Frisbee turned upside down. Um, and to encourage him to interact with the Frisbee in the beginning, he didn't show any particular fear of it. It's small, pretty low. I just tossed treats into the Frisbee. So that's what I'm doing here first. I just tossed a treat in there. He's not the best at finding treats. Of course, I'm always I'm not always the best at throwing them. So there's another one. There's another one. Then I started once he was grabbing treats out of that frisbee, no problem. I would wait for him like that, stick his little nose over the frisbee, and then I would toss the treat in. Then I used a hand target. For him, I used two fingers like this, a moving hand target to get him to step into the Frisbee. <laughs> he did a lot of interesting things with this Frisbee. And then I moved to just tapping it as a cue. And finally, I just would um, wait. He'd step in it. I'd give him a treat. Then I'd toss a treat away. He'd go out of it. Then I'd wait. He'd come back and step in it. Um, so that's an example of using, starting with a food lure and then going to a prompt and then cueing a known behavior. I was using that um, nose target of my fingers to move him over the Frisbee so he put his foot in. Um, because I ultimately wanted to use a tub, I decided to move up from the Frisbee to something that was larger, um, larger and bigger and had higher sides, but still wasn't quite the the tub yet. I want an intermediate object. I tried out this paint roller pan. Um, you'll see when he steps in it, that's a little bit unstable, which is not ideal. Um, luckily, he didn't seem to have that much of an interest or a, an issue with it. But he, so once he had learned stick my foot in the Frisbee, this went much faster with the next object. And then we moved on to this tub, which initially I thought I was going to use. All right, so with those three objects, those are all pretty small. And so I actually didn't um, work up to getting his back paws into them. I decided that they were all a little bit too small for my purposes. So then I moved to this larger um, sort of bussing tub or whatever that was big enough for a pancake to comfortably stand in with all four feet. Um, and you see, because I'm starting with a brand new object, I went ahead and um, tossed some treats in there to get him started. And front paw in, that was fine. I wasn't going to get too picky to start. Um, pretty soon he just got into the, um, put all his feet in there on his own. There he goes. Um, so after you've trained this, like get onto a thing or get into a thing once, a lot of times when you move to new objects, it goes a lot faster. So, so pretty soon I just was waiting for him to climb in and I toss this tree. There's no water in here yet. We're just practicing getting in and out of the, of the tub. Here's Jasper who needs his feet cleaned, as you can see. Um, and there I'm using a, I used a food lure to get him started. Um, here's another way to get it started. I, I practiced um, using a paw shake, like a give, your, give me your paw. Um, as a way to get Juno's 
foot over the tub. Um, sorry, I'll go back and play that again. So that's another way um, you could use a behavior your dog might already know to get their get them to place their foot in the tub. All right. And by the way, if you have any questions during the presentation, just enter them under the video. All right. So that was step into the tub training. Now we're going to add water. This is where a lot of um, a lot of us might stall out. A lot of our dogs might stall out. They were OK getting in and out of a dry tub, but add water and you can forget it. Uh, so one of the the sort of small the ways to introduce just a tiny bit of water to this um, tub training scenario is to get that mat like you saw I had that yoga mat in the bottom of the of the black plastic bin just get that a little damp uh, and so that's what I did to start and I'll show you a video in a second then you can have a little standing water like little puddles of standing water on the mat you can move on to the bottom of the tub being just barely covered but totally covered with water and then just slowly increase the water up to whatever the um your desired depth is like how how deep do you need it for a typical cleaning for your dog now anytime you increase the amount of water in the tub be prepared to decrease difficulty in other aspects of the training so say you just went from a half an inch of water to an inch of water um and you were reinforcing get all your paws into the tub, all four paws or three paws in Pancake's case, you might decide that, okay, now that I went up to an inch of water, at first I'll, I'll settle for just one paw in, in the tub and then build back up to all four paws. Sometimes you'll need to do that. All right, let's see, introducing water video. So here in this video, um, that mat is just a little damp. And you'll see when um, Pancake climbs out, you see little wet paw prints, but there's not like standing water in there. So he'd get in, I'd toss the treats. When he was happy with that, now we've got some, you can see the standing water. Oh, it's not, the floor of that tub is not totally covered, but there's a little bit. And again, the behavior I'm reinforcing is get all your feet in there. Also terrible treat toss there. And then he'd get in, I'd toss a treat in, and then I'd toss another treat out to get him out so he could get back in again. <laughs> another toss that wasn't great. Um, I later moved to the pool, because we had the pool out. Um, and we'll just see, you know, increasing depth of water here. And at each stage, I wanted to make sure before I moved on that he was, <laughs> this is a little high for him, but he can do it, um, happily getting in and out of the water on his own for a cue. Here he's in sort of the pretty deep water for him. And um, if you remember two weeks ago, we talked about water games and way to make ways to make the pool fun. Um, so that was an example of he climbed into this uh, water. It was several inches deep and I put in his floating food tray there, puzzle tray. Uh, as something more interesting to do while he waited around in the water. All right, so that was, so now we've got your dog going in and out of the tub with some water in it. That's good. Ah, I wanted to mention this because this comes up a lot. Sometimes in training, any kind of training really, um, it might look like your dog is confused, like they were, they were doing it. They were doing whatever it is you're trying to get them to do just fine. And now they're not, they're just staring at you. And this can happen in this kind of training that I'm talking about today, especially when you add water or add more water. Um, your dog was just hopping in and out of the tub, no problem with half an inch of water and you increase it to an inch and all of a sudden the dog's just kind of staring at you. Um, and often that's interpreted as, well, my dog's being stubborn or I don't, my dog's confused. I don't think he knows what, what to do now. Um, so if your dog suddenly won't go into the tub after you add some water, um, it's possible your dog is confused, but, um, it's also possible that your dog just finds that additional amount of water, uh, aversive. They don't want to get into it. It's not that they don't know what will get them the treat, but it's not worth it because they don't like that much water. So what can you do in this situation? Just assume, um, 
you know, if you assume that, well, it could be the increased water my dog is not comfortable getting in um, into, then just back off on the amount of water is one approach to troubleshoot it. Um, you can try warmer water. I found this actually makes a really big difference with pancake when I get to either deeper amounts of water or if I want him to like lie down in the water. <laughs> um, cold hose water, he's not a big fan of. So warmer water is, um, I get better training results if I heat up the water. Uh, if you're not using a non-slip surface, uh, consider adding that. And again, you can also decrease what's required. So if your dog um, won't put all their feet in the water when you add another you know, half inch of water, go back to a single paw in and, and reinforce that if you can get it. All right, so let's talk about um, how to put this to use in real life. Um, one thing my dogs like, this is a way to make it fun and also to get them really splashing around and getting that mud off their paws, was to um, to teach and reinforce them running back and forth in and out of the foot bath. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, also doing tricks in the water, in the pool that get their feet moving through the water more, like walking around, doing hand target, doing spins. Um, and then remember, you do want to get them to exit um, onto the mats or towels around your foot bath and get them moving around on those a little bit so their feet aren't soaking wet. Oops. All right. I think. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So here I am using a food lure to work on pancake moving the long way through the foot bath. So he can go in and out. It's a little bit clumsy for him. It's a little high. He can do it. Um, it's more fun for my big dogs, as you can see, and easier for them. And for them, this made it kind of a fun game. I didn't get the feeling that running back and forth this way was super fun for Pancake, but my big dogs really liked it. I was kind of moving back and forth with them kind of quickly, which they found, they seemed to find entertaining. All right, and then here's, this is a day we came back from a hike and all three dogs were muddy. Um, and so I got the pool filled up, got our mats and towels around it. And then here's Jasper doing some little bit of hand touch to which gets him to move his paws a little bit. Um, with a bigger dog, you don't have quite as much space. Had him do some spins, which moves all four paws around, gets that water splashing around, getting the mud off. Um, and then once I got him out, like we looked at last week, getting dogs to wipe off their paws on their own um, on mats or towels, I had him do some spins and walk back and forth over all of those towels to dry off his feet a little bit. And here's Juno doing the same thing, some spins in both directions. You see this was a group effort. There's dogs everywhere. Um, more spins on the towel. I had Juno actually lie down, I think, because um, you can see her lower legs are wet pretty far up. So I did that a few times to kind of soak up some of that water on her four legs. Meanwhile, yeah, Pancake's trying to get treats. Jasper's drinking the bath water. The usual chaos. <laughs> All right. Um... All right. So that's one way you can get uh, a pretty decent amount of mud off your dog's paws and lower legs without touching them. Um, so, but do choose a paw washing setup that's easy for your dog. And that will depend on a lot of factors, like how big is your dog? How fearful are they of uh, new objects? Because a lot of times bigger new objects are scarier than smaller ones. Um, does your dog have arthritis? Both those big dogs you saw in the videos are 14 years old. They do have some aches and pains. And so I wouldn't want to go any higher in terms of the sides of the pool or the tub than I already am. Add that water in super slowly. Um, if you've got a fearful dog who's just starting to build confidence and try new things and engage in training, you don't want to um, give them a negative experience by, you know, they learn this in and out of the tub behavior and then you add, you know, an inch of water and it 
it's cold and it's uncomfortable and it shocks them and now they won't approach the tub anymore. So introduce it super slowly. Um, in the examples I gave today, I just got that, um, that yoga mat a little damp, but I didn't add more water than the yoga mat could absorb at first. So there was no standing water. And again, remember you can heat it up too to make it a little bit less shocking. Um, and do make this a game, like really like any positive reinforcement training, uh, make this fun for your dog. It'll um, keep them engaged and help you get their paws truly um, clean instead of just kind of doing something quick and dirty they can barely stand just to get the, the bulk of the mud off. All right, that's it for today, everybody. There, um, Don't forget to check out our blog for more free um, free help, free info, Instagram channel, YouTube channel, um, Facebook page, and a free support group. And then that link at the bottom is our training membership where we have a couple monthly um, live sessions where we either do a skill building session or we do an open Q&A for members. All right, folks, I hope that's helpful. Um, maybe you don't deal with mud with your dog's paws, in which case, congratulations. Um, we are always fighting a battle here to keep um, our floors and honestly, our furniture and our beds a little less muddy and um, filled with various debris from hikes. And um, this has been a nice way to get all dogs, all of our dogs' paws washed off pretty quickly without any um, objections from them because none of them love really invasive um, like scrubbing of paws and stuff. So this is a quick, easy way if I'm just trying to get mud off paws and everyone is happy and enjoys it. All right. Have a wonderful week. Uh, next week, we're going to actually talk about training your dog to actually wipe, like wipe their paws um, before coming into the house. <laughs>